On this episode of Flight Tales, we'll talk about some density altitude and landing distances, and we'll have some more good <laughs> cockpit comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Another solid fact from Brendan about the Wright brothers. Yes. Oh, we always <laughs> have the solid facts. Solid facts in aviation history. I'm not going to say they were trying to fly a glider again, but... <laughs> <laughs> Every episode is just... In 1904, they were probably flying a glider. Join us. With another episode of Flight Tales. So, what's happening? Uh, well, we had the ATC meetup. They talked about uh, Special VF4. Yeah. Hey, we talked about Special VF4. Yeah. 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 <laughs> special VF4. If you went to that, you should have taught Nick something. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, teach Nick. You know, I ended up missing it. So I didn't get to see. Yes. Ryan was like, I know enough about Special VF4. Yeah. Uh, Oops. Where were you, Ryan? Uh, in Denver. Doing what? He was becoming a ski instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to snow ski. Yeah. Snow ski. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like saying, I, um, I, I, I instruct how to airplane fly. Yes, I airplane fly, and, sh- and I'm a teacher in it. I teach airplane fly. <laughs> We've just been flying. Uh, well, 64 Papa is should be back this week. Um, hey, John's I, flying it right now. A real update. Is he? I thought so. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what he did this morning. Yes, he said, yes, that's right. He went to And I again. can't remember anything, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how true it was, but he was like, yeah, Ryan said it for free, just get in it and go fly. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> so, I did tell him to go. I want us all to just fly it as much as we can, but doing like cross countries and stuff. Okay. So just a bit. John's you know, definitely hopping on that. He needs cross country. Time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's going to cancel all his students. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm in Denver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, we got How? the 25 hours. We got the 25 hours. <laughs> the break in period. Matters. Done. All done. We're getting 6 4 Papa back and uh, we're going to bring it back here. And we're going to go flying in it. Go fly across countries all over. Get the break-in period. We got to do it for 25 hours. Yeah. At no least. touch and goes. No, no touch and goes. No. No stalls. No slow flight. If you want to go do some instrument like VOR tracking or that's about all you can do. <laughs> <laughs> that's about Fly it. straight and level that's for a little it. while. Like uh, put the hood on, you know. First get you some instrument simulator. You do your instrument. first private lesson. <laughs> that's it. Straight yep. and level. That's right. Discovery flight. Uh, discovery flight. Yeah, you could do a discovery work. flight in there. There you go. Yeah. Don't think we were going to put people in there, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, safety reasons. Yeah. yeah. So that that's that's exciting because you know, six four Papa's got a new radio and got an overhaul prop, and now it's got new cylinders, brand new plane. Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. Just get rid of it. Just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> sell it. I now. got you know, I got a little sentimental value. Yeah, it's the first one. Six four Papa, like you know, it's. First one. Yeah. The first yeah, child of yeah. the fleet. That's right. She's I can't the get rid of. It's like getting rid of your really child, old. you know, and tell, yeah. telling your child to get lost. Yeah. You can't do I'll that. I'll tell my kids, get, get lost. <laughs> get Scram. out of here. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's exciting because 6 4 Pop has been out for a while. Yeah. Zero 09 Echo is about to go right into yep. it. It's going to have a new engine here soon. How long is that going to take? Just got to pay the bill. <laughs> just gotta buy it how long does um it take? i mean usually it takes about a week just to swap the engines because you're taking the old one off putting the new one on and yeah. then that one's gonna be in a, a run-up area a run-up yep then we'll be doing too. the same thing with that one you know cross going, countries cross countries in that one that's all right i mean instrument stuff though would be okay for it i was about to say yeah throw all the instrument guys in there yeah Oh, we didn't have to fire Will. No, he passed. Oh. He passed. That's right. Yes, we did talk about that last time. He was. Uh, we weren't sure if he was going to make it. And um, yeah, he passed, so he can keep his job. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and his student passed too, so like he can. He he's good. He's he's set. Good. He can he can 
Definitely keep his job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he didn't know it. No, he didn't he know it. He was on be... that. He was that close. <laughs> he didn't that know close it, but he should have been very nervous for that check. <laughs> if he watches the podcast, he'll find out. Oh today. yeah, he'll know all about it. <laughs> he'll know all about it. Watch the last podcast. Will. <laughs> yeah, go watch it. Let's get some pre-solo advice. <laughs> I I got some pre-solo advice. Oh gosh, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> it's just going to be a dad joke that he didn't want to use in the cockpit comedy session. <laughs> I'll tell you some advice. I got some advice right here. Now, I was going to talk about, um, you know, takeoff distance and uh, landing distance at high elevations. Oh, wow. Oh, that's not what you expected, was it? <laughs> wow. I'm actually <laughs> yeah, I let you down, didn't I? <laughs> All right. Let's so, talk about Yeah. That. Because we're at a low elevation here. We are at pretty much the lowest you can get. Yes. And so you don't need much runway at lower elevation. Why not, Ryan? Because the air's more dense. So it slows you down? No, it doesn't slow you down. Oh. There's more air moving over the wings, which can create the lift to lift you off the ground faster. Yeah. Oh, so we're talking about taking off. Yes. Correct. Correct. Why is there more air over the wings? Because the air molecules are very close to each other. It's like a party. It's a party. It's a party. It's a party. But more air, more air over the wings. So because yes. you have more air over the wings, you can produce the lift. And so at higher out, so what, what don't they get? Why you use more runway at higher elevations. That's what they don't understand. And so they always say, well, the air is less dense. Yeah, because the air is less dense at higher elevation. So it's going to take more runway. And you can look at that in the takeoff chart, you know, in the POH. Yep. Pilot operating handbook. You can put that chart up right there. So do something cool yeah. like at it. <laughs> Stop making me make charts, man. <laughs> it takes it's a while. A, it's, a, it's a normal chart. You can pull it off the internet. Yes. Yes. So in the takeoff chart, your uh, liftoff speed, airspeed, is the same no matter if you're at lower elevation or higher elevation. Okay. So, that should make even more sense because if your speed's the same, it's going to take you longer to lift up at a lower density. Well, that's where air. people start to put things together because like I'll ask the question and I'll say, they'll say, oh, well, it's less dense. And I'm like, okay, so w w what's the difference? And they're like, well, you got to go faster to, to get to, that, to that, that speed to where you have the amount of wind going over the wing. But I was like, well, your indicated says it never changes. So- what speed is changing because your indicated is never changing. Your indicated is measuring the amount of wind that's going over the wing, right? That's what I didn't know. Right. Your indicated <laughs> airspeed is measuring the amount of air that's going over the wing essentially, because that's how your pitot tube works. It measures the ram air coming into the pitot tube, right? So it's telling you how much wind is going over the wing, but you're going faster because you're you're having you to move. You actually are going you, faster. Your yes. true airspeed is faster. Yeah. Because like, you're so having like, to move through the air faster to get to that same indicated airspeed. Because the density of the because air Because there's less dense air. When you go and uh, land or take off at an airport at higher elevation, you can see like your peripheral vision. You can see the stuff moving a lot faster. And that's Buildings, why trees, whatever. But that's why it's, I it's, asked, it's kind of freaky. Yeah, you do be moving. Yeah, you moving fast. I don't know because I've never been to a place like that. But. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying it looks faster than it normally looks because you're actually going. Yeah, faster. You are going faster. Yeah. If you're like, why am I not flying yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're fly, like if you're used to flying at sea level, and then you go up to a higher elevation and you fly, it it's freaky because you're not used to that. You're not used to seeing the buildings moving so fast. You're still showing the same indicated speed that you normally lift off and at. you're like, something's or, wrong. Something's yeah. wrong. So in your head, you're like kind of freaking out a little bit. So if you don't know, you will yeah. freak out. Yes. Yeah. You will be going faster. But yeah. that's why I ask the question, though, whenever they say you have to go faster, I say, well, your chart says your, your indicated airspeed's going the same the whole time, no matter what. So they're right, though. They are right. They're saying you're going through faster, but I'm trying to get them to understand what is faster. It's not your indicated airspeed the, that's faster. The it's why? Your, yeah. your true airspeed is faster, right? But they're right. 
They are right. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to get them to understand though. A deeper level. Or think about what, tell me what is changing. Yeah. In that scenario. Because you're telling me to a normal person. Well, they're still telling you, you got to go faster. Yes. Which is right. But you got to say the right words. But listen, you're telling me that you're going faster, which is correct. But to a normal person, if I looked at this chart, it says that my indicated is never going to change no matter what. So what is going faster then? You. That's what I want them to hear. I want them to tell me what airspeed is faster. So there's multiple airspeeds. Yes. So you have indicated airspeed, you have true airspeed, you have ground speed. So we're trying to get them to say that true airspeed is making you go faster. What's the difference between true airspeed and ground speed? True airspeed uh, factors in temperature and altitude. So if you're at a higher elevation, your true airspeed is going to be different than if you're at sea level because the altitude's different and the temperature's different. Might be. It could be the same temperature. But your but your true airspeed is going to be different only because you're at a higher elevation. But you generally get a higher to a limit. You get a higher true airspeed as you go up in altitude. So that's why it's best sometimes to try to fly as high as you can because you can get there faster, um, especially if you have a tailwind. That factors in your ground speed. The way you usually start is you pull out a, a takeoff chart and you say, "What's your takeoff distance at?" This altitude compared to this altitude. And they'll say, uh, at 6,000, it is this. And at uh, 1,000 or sea level, it's this. And you're like, okay, why is that different? And they'll say, okay, well, it's different because you're at different altitudes. Because you're at different altitudes, you have less dense air at higher altitudes, right? So because of that less dense air, you have less wind coming over the wings, right? So in order to get the same amount of wind going over the wings at sea level as you would at 6,000 feet, you have to move faster through the air, right? So So you're... Which is increasing your true airspeed. You're trying to put it all together because this is at the level when they're trying to take their check rod, they should know all this stuff. Right. The different types of airspeed are learned in like chapter two or three, whatever. Right. So the issue is like this, so they learn the three different types of airspeed, and that's just the rote memorization of what each speed is, the definition, and that kind of thing. And then we're trying to get them to the correlation level where they could take the the three different airspeeds and figure out why your takeoff distance is farther. Not only is the air less dense, but what's the reason behind, you know, the change? Because just knowing what those three are doesn't answer that. Unless you understand it, yes, like you're saying, yes. I mean, anybody could say it's less dense up there, but what is, I mean, what does density have anything to do with flying a plane? And anybody can tell you what the differences between the three are, but how do they work together? Yeah, yes, yep. And why does all of that play a factor? So really, it sounds like all the problems students are having is connecting the dots, yes, between things. That's all it is, and that's our goal as a flight instructor is to get that student. To that level. Spark that yes, connection. The connection. Are you CFIs out there? Ruac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is, right? Yes. It's the acronym is RUAC, but it's rote understanding, application, and then CS correlation. Yep. That's what the the steps of learning is for us. We're taking you from I'm just memorizing it to I understand why this does what it does to, okay, I understand it and I can apply it to what I'm doing in everyday flying and then correlation to where I can take a situation that I'm, I'm experiencing in real life and say, okay, I can apply everything that I've learned and put it to use. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Put it to use in flying without someone telling me. So that's what we're trying to get them to. That's your FOI fundamentals of instructing psychology that you have to learn for to be a flight instructor. Yeah. 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 The more you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you see it though. And a lot of that stuff they talk about, you don't even realize that you do it every day, but you do it every day. Like if you're teaching, if you yeah. teach it, they, they go through every phase, no matter if you see it or not, you know, but your job is just to get them. It's kind of like FOI stuff is like, you know, you, 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 you first see it, like, I don't know, what were they talking about? And then as you start instructing and you go back and look at it, it's like, oh, yeah, 
I did use this. I have to yep. use this. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, I had a student who did this, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yes. The more you know. The reason this is a, a good question, a good scenario is like you see how much is covered just in this one scenario. Yeah. Like of you being fully understanding, you have to understand a lot of different things to be able to apply it Put to it this all situation. Yeah. Right. So you can ask this situation and then you, you have a good understanding of what this person knows on multiple different things. And a big problem that I'm seeing right now with people is they just don't understand like what the pedo tube does or how the pedo tube works, right? But if you understand what the pedo tube does, you know why that indicated never changes on that chart because it's measuring the amount of airflow coming to. Is it electronic? Screen. Nope. That's I didn't think so. Nope. It's ram pressure. The measure is ram air pressure through the pedo tube. How much air is ramming through that tube? That's right. That's correct. <laughs> ramming through that tube. And then it compares it to that static port pressure as well. And then it gives you an indication on your indicated airspeed. It's all about how much wind is or how much air is going over the, the wing. Which makes sense because you that, need to know that to take off. Yeah, because <laughs> whatever I know at 55 knots, that's what I rotate at, right? But at 55 knots, if I know that the pitot tube is measuring the air, that's telling me at 55 knots, I have the correct amount of air that I need to rotate. To when you say rotate, off. you mean be able to pull back pull and Pull back off. and fly. Yep. I, I think sometimes they don't understand uh, because we don't fly at higher altitudes. They don't really even ha- experience it to begin with to, to even bring the question up to dig it. And they feel like they don't need it. to know. Yeah. Cause they fly at 42 elevation, yeah. <laughs> you know, 40 feet of ele- 42 feet of elevation. They don't need to know. So they, they New just New Orleans kinda, lakefront is six feet. Yeah. You, wow. You, yeah. yeah. You don't need That's to almost know. underwater. Yes. Almost. <laughs> yeah. It's a That's bowl. what they say about New Orleans. Yeah. Bowl. <laughs> It not only affects your takeoff, it affects your climb after you get off the ground. So like the mountain in front of you or building, you want to make sure you're going to clear that, you know, and then as you go up in altitude, it's going to get worse. You know, your performance is going to go down. But um, it's not bad. You just need to adjust. You, you just, just need, need to, to be aware of it yeah. so you can you can do whatever plan you need accordingly. to do. Yes, plan accordingly. You may not be able to uh, put all the take as much fuel, you know, you may not be able to load the plane plane down as much as you normally would at sea level because of all those factors. So you might have to take less fuel, which means you might have to make a fuel stop on the way back from Denver, say, where if you left sea level, you know, you could top off on fuel and may not have to stop. All this is about how the plane performs in Whatever the atmosphere is, right? And based off of cold, your your airplane performs better in cold weather too because that's cold air is more dense than hot air. Yeah, because right? the molecules like to be close to each yeah. other when it's when cold. You're cold. When you're cold, you huddle up so you get closer together, right? That's what yeah. the molecules do. And yeah. when you're hot, you get away from people because you're all sweaty and yeah, hot. You don't want to touch. Yeah, it's, so yeah, they, get out, touch uh, they spread out. And one of the things people do confuse about the density question is that they go up in altitude and they think, I'm going up in altitude and it's getting colder. So because I'm getting colder, I should have more dense air because I'm higher in altitude. Um, And that's one of the misunderstandings that I've seen with a couple different people is they think that you should have better performance as you get higher, which is obviously not true. But that's just them thinking too in depth on everything you get what i'm saying they're thinking too much into it they have an understanding of one thing but they're misunderstanding another thing and putting that on top as you go up in altitude it gets colder and colder and colder and colder so because it gets colder and colder they think it's more dense well it's not more dense i was thinking about it with the mountain thing though like even here in the summers our planes barely climb like they don't want to go up because of how hot it is and how and we got humidity. Humidity yeah. also affects humidity it. Humidity messes it up. But then you'll come fly in the winter when it's like we get a day where it's 40 degrees outside and the plane all of a sudden acts like it it's wants like to just- like a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a rocket. Acts like it just wants to start yeah. flying. But, that, that, but that's just all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's time for Tower Talk. They have a girl in the tower right now that's training. 
And oh. yeah, she was giving me a clearance for taxi instructions the other day. I should have read it back because the student was trying to write it down. She came back and she was like, are y'all writing it down? Is that why y'all are asking me to read it slow? Oh. I was like, yes. Wait, yes. so you said, can you read it back because we're trying to write it down? And no, then, oh. I said, can you read that back, please? She read it back slow. And then knew y'all writing it, it down? She read it back slow, but she was like, are y'all writing it down? Because like, <laughs> if y'all aren't writing it down, I felt like I was talking way too slow for you. Because she went, go to four right via Bravo, Juliet. Cross four left at Bravo, hold short of one one at Julia. So she did it well. She did it very, very she slow. She sounds very nice. But <laughs> I see what she was saying. Like if we were just trying to, we couldn't hear and we were trying to memorize it. She like her started... talking that slow. I probably forgot the first part because yeah. you were talking so He's slow. like, that was really dumb for me to do if y'all are not writing it down. So <laughs> yeah. please tell me y'all are writing it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she asked us if we were writing it down. I was like, yes, we are always writing it down. So that, <laughs> that helps. So. So she, and then, uh, one, nice. one, yeah, one of the other guys, she's trying to figure out it, what, What's what going she on? can do to help us out as much as possible. Cause she's training too. She came back over and she was like, I was informed that that was a very dumb question to ask. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, no, no, you're fine. I was like, don't let him berate you like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to tower. I was like, is he in tower? She was like, yes, he's in tower. So I went to tower. I was like, I hear you're harassing ground to uh, ground to controllers now. He was like, from the sounds of it, it sounded like she was harassing you guys. <laughs> now time for today in aviation history. On October 10th, 1902, Wilbur Wright flew a glider in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. This was part of the Wright brothers year of work to develop the first successful airplane. So he might, have, he probably, so they're saying he probably flew because this is the year they were working on it. <laughs> so he most likely they on just didn't have a picture. <laughs> it seems like these guys are flying flying gliders almost every day. That's what they're saying. They're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they were flying every day, so they probably flew on this day. Yeah, probably this day, right? <laughs> we'll just keep them coming. That's basically what the site said. It was just like, yeah, they were flying all year, so oh. they were flying at their waking every waking moment <laughs> was trying to fly gliders for these guys. On this day in history, in 1990, the first Learjet 60 flew. Is that better or worse than the one you flew? Uh, Got to be better. It's a bigger number. No, the 45 is newer. So that means was, nothing. Uh, <laughs> Makes no sense. No, that doesn't make sense. Lear? I thought the same thing for a Explain while too. Yourself, Lear. Yeah. Yeah, they went uh, 31, and then I guess they went to 60, because the 31 was all going on, I think, in the 90s, too. Yeah, it makes, they just they just pick numbers, you know? They do be picking Let's numbers. just pick a number. Like somebody pick a number. 60. Okay. Yeah, perfect. We're going <laughs> to use that one. in the bag. 60. <laughs> who is that guy? He's the janitor. Yeah, <laughs> he's the first guy to say a number. <laughs> we don't know who he is. I got another one. 1947, Chuck Yeager's seventh powered flight. Chuck had the X1 at 0.94 Mach when his controls suddenly ceased to function. Shock waves on the plane's control surfaces made operation impossible. As cool headed in such situations, Chuck turned off the plane's rockets to slow down and jettison the main remaining fuel. That's cool. He had to He's turn off the yeah. rockets. Yeah, he just turned the rockets off, you know, and just landed. So you said 0.9 Mach? Point nine four. Point nine four. To me, that's crazy because 1902, old boy was trying to figure out how to fly a glider. <laughs> and what year was, what year this was, is 1947. 1947. Whoa. Yeah. And he's got two rockets that's strapped to him. That's not even a life worth. <laughs> no. That's not even Wilbur a life. Wilbur could have still been alive. Yes. Wilbur could have been out here being like, why did I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> we could have just taken a rocket and strapped it to this glider. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to me though. Yeah. Dude was at... 0.9 Mach was about to break the sound barrier. <laughs> like, Wilbur trying to go 30 feet with a lawnmower <laughs> motor. Yeah. What is the sound barrier? How fast do you have to go to break? Is it Mach 1? Uh, yeah. I think that's why it's Mach 1. Yeah. Mach 1 but is. You were this, close with the. But I um, think it's like 600, 714 or something like that. Oh, 714. 666. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just real creepy. Yeah. I looked it up. I was like, ugh. Yeah. Why this? Yeah. Gross. <laughs> devil, devil, devil. Yeah. <laughs> It's 343 meters per second. Oh, that's I, I knew nice it was 300 know. yards or meters, whatever. I knew it was about I that. I mean, we're in America. We use knots. <laughs> <laughs> 
not meters. That is the <laughs> dumbest <laughs> sentence. We use n- <laughs> that's some down south shit. We don't use meters. We use knots. 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 Like saying, knots. It's knots. different <laughs> units of measurement. <laughs> and feet. Yeah. Not meters. Oh, well, this one's different than what I said. Was it Mach? Talking about last time? No, no, we talked about how fast How fast is Mach 1. That's what she said. That's well, no, what yeah, we I about. looked it up and it was there. It's 761 on this at sea level on a standard day. A Mach number is the ratio of an object speed in a given medium to the speed of the sound in that medium. So it changes. Kind of like with air density. <sighs> That just confused me. Now time for some cockpit comedy. How does Cupid visit his girlfriend? I don't know, Ryan. How? On an aeroplane. No! Yes! (laughs) Yes! That was perfect dad joke. (laughs) Uh, I'm going home. Y'all can finish this. (laughs) Where do pilots go to get expert advice? The mirror. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Brennan. Yours have to get better. Ryan, yours have to get worse. (laughs) Mine have to get worse. They're not. Okay. There's no good pilot. They really aren't. There's no good. They're all cringy. Yes. And now the final approach. The final Final approach. approach. We got the uh, Cirrus showcase coming up. Wow, that's October 17th. (laughs) October 17th, we're going to have a lot of people probably that are going to come to look at Cirruses. A lot. Lots. We hope. We're going to (laughs) have- Please come. (laughs) Please, please come. We're going to have an SR-22T and our SR-20 and then a Vision Jet. Can I fly it? No. I mean, how much does it cost to do a lap in the pattern at the Vision Jet? Here, it's easy to land. So, I mean. Yeah. You should be good. You hear yeah. it's easy to land? Like, do you just press a button and it lands? Actually. <laughs> actually. <laughs> that you say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, no. They do have an auto land system in them. They have an auto land system from Garmin. And so, if you like, you know, your pilot passes out. You can hit the auto land and it'll find the nearest airport. You might have to do some <laughs> extra like, stuff after. Like, I don't know. Hands. Yeah. That's it. That's the final approach. What's over there? Food? Free food? Are free they drinks? Food? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't remember what's on the menu, but uh, Fizo's is bringing the food. And then, uh, well, yeah, we got to get drinks. We're going to have uh, beverages. What type of beverages? Uh, what kind of beverages are we talking uh, about? <laughs> kind of some, uh, some alcoholic beverages, oh, possibly. Oh, you got me with Fizos and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you need to just... Friday doesn't exist. And, uh, no. <laughs> no, we're, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to be drinking and eating. We're like... Let me fly just let me, <laughs> yeah. let me fly the fishing jet. I swear I can do it. I hear it's easy to land. I swear oh, I got it. It's got an auto land anyway. I swear I, mean, I can do it. Okay. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Brennan Go for being my co host today. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 